All right, so in this video, we'll continue our discussion with um, graphing rational functions. <clears throat> so the next example we'll look at here, uh, you'll find in the notes, and we'll follow the same process as we did before. So the first step, uh, the domain. So in this problem, uh, when you look carefully, um, your denominator actually factors into x plus 3 squared, which is going to make it a little easier to see that our x can't be negative 3. So the domain is negative infinity to negative 3, union negative 3 to positive infinity. Uh, the second step comes straight from the first. Um, if we can't have a graph at negative 3, then we have a vertical asymptote there. So x equals negative 3. There won't be any crossing check needed in the vertical asymptote. Uh, so moving on to the horizontal or oblique. Um, you can see here that the degree on bottom is bigger, so that would be our case 2 that I discussed, telling us we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So now, we can't forget about the crossing check. Uh, to find the crossing check, I'll take the 2 and I'll set them equal to one another. <clears throat> and in an attempt to solve for x, I'll multiply both sides by the denominator, leaving us with 0 equals negative 2x. In other words, x equals 0. Therefore, it does cross. So, uh, where is it going to cross? Well, it's going to cross when the x-coordinate is 0, and it's going to cross when the y-coordinate is 0. So, it crosses at 0, 0. <clears throat> the fourth step uh, would be the intercepts. Now, if you look carefully at what we just did in that crossing check, in this case, we were testing to see if the horizontal asymptote y equals 0 uh, if the graph crossed it. Well, in doing so, we essentially set the function equal to 0, and in an attempt to find that, we also found um, the x-intercepts. So we know that the x-intercept here can be 0, 0. Now, we also know that that x-intercept is a y-intercept, and there can only ever be one y-intercept. Uh, there can only ever be one y-intercept because if you had more than one y-intercept, you wouldn't have a function. So we really, again, didn't have to do a lot of work in step four. We just had to be able to think through it a little bit. So I have all the information that I came looking for. I'll go ahead now. I'll put my asymptote in at y equals zero my vertical at x equals negative 3, and my intercept here at 0. <clears throat> okay, so we really don't have as much to go off of in the last example, um, but that's okay, um, because when the y-intercept is, uh, excuse me, when the, the uh, horizontal asymptote is y equals 0, really what we're doing now when we determine if there's going to be graph in our four regions is determining if it's going to be above the x-axis or below the x-axis. Uh, so again, we've got these four regions. We've got one, two, three, four. Um, I'll start to the left of negative three. I know there's going to be something in one of these because the domain says so. I know it can't be both because if it was, it wouldn't be a function. So I'll go back to my original function. Um, and looking carefully at what we're given, the original function is always going to be positive in the denominator. It's a squared value. And if I take a number less than negative 3 and I plug it in to the numerator, a negative times a negative is going to give us a positive. So for any number to the left of negative 3, we're going to get a positive y value. So that means our graph has to be above the x-axis in that region. Okay, so now <clears throat> we're going to apply the same idea now um, to the right side of negative 3. So for example here, I'll go ahead, let me erase this, I'll go ahead and test a number like 1. So if I test a number like 1, I'll plug it back into the original function. In the denominator, it's positive. In the numerator, if I plug a positive 1 in, I get a negative which means that when I'm at 1, then I'm below the x-axis. So that tells me my behavior 
has to look like this. Oops, I have to come through and I have to then come back up to the asymptote. So it almost looks like there's this little valley in there, a little bump. Uh, so I'm going to come down through it, blast through the, the asymptote, and then it's going to start to come back up to the other one again, kind of acting like a magnet, uh, similar to the last example. Um, so that would be our graph now of uh, the, the previous example. All right, so in this example, um, we'll again approach it the same way. The first step, the domain, uh, is going to be everything but one. The second step, which comes straight from the first, tells us we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. Our third step now, um, we would need to look at the degree on top versus the degree on bottom. And so the degree on top is bigger. So this is the case where you're going to have an oblique asymptote. Um, and I said a little while ago to, def to find that, all we need to do is divide. So over to the side, I'm going to go ahead and, and, go, and use some just basic polynomial uh, long division. So when I run this division process out, uh, what times x gives me x squared? Well, x, an x squared minus x. Remember to subtract, which gives us a positive x plus 0, plus 1. And again, we got to subtract. So we get a remainder of 1. Now, when doing this, and you're going to come up with a remainder sometimes, uh, completely disregard the 1. Completely disregard the remainder. The oblique asymptote is actually going to be this thing right here. So for us, y equals x plus 1 would be the oblique asymptote. Okay? Now, we would still need to do a crossing check on this. So I'll take the, the linear asymptote uh, and set it equal to the function. Uh, and that's going to give me an x plus 1. There it is, x plus 1 equals x squared over x minus 1. I'll multiply both sides uh, by the denominator, which will give me an x squared minus 1 equals x squared. And if we subtract x squared from both sides, we get negative 1 equals 0. Therefore, does not cross. All right. So we've got our oblique asymptote. We found out that it does not cross. Uh, now we're ready for the intercepts, step four. So uh, for the intercepts here, um, if you let x be 0, Similar to the last one, we get a y value that's a 0. Uh, so we have the point 0, 0, which, similar to the last one, is uh, both an x and a y-intercept. So we have all we need there. So I'll go ahead now and, and sketch the graph of what we have. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. We have an oblique at y equals x plus 1. So that's kind of looking like that. And we have an intercept at 0, 0. So now, um, we still have those, those distinct regions if you ignore the black and look at just the red. We've got this one, we've got this one, this little guy up here, and this one over here. So to determine where there's going to be graph, um, again, we'll just use a little bit of logic. I have a, an intercept, so I know that I have to go through it. And we also understand the behavior of graphs around asymptotes. So there's going to be a part of it. I know it can't be up here as well, because if it was, it wouldn't be a function. I know there's going to be something over here, because my domain says so. Uh, I can't have both, because if I did it, it would be a function. And I can't have it down here either, because I don't have any more x-intercepts. So by default, the second part of the graph has to be up in that small region right there. 